the Shakespeare authorship problem. What went wrong in Stephen Greenblatt's brain? Blog 9. The Shakespeare biographer Stephen Greenblatt in his book Will in the World notes that Shakespeare after his previously aspiring life, over and over again in his works points to an unforeseen disaster, and to a sudden unhappiness, fear and loss, and still staggering, to his loss of identity, name and social status. In his book, Will in the World Greenblatt writes, again and again in his place to unforeseen catastrophe, smooth sailing turns into a disaster, terror and loss. The loss is obviously and immediately material, but it is so, and more crushingly, a loss of identity, this catastrophe is often by the deliberate alteration or disappearance of the name, and with it, the alteration or disappearance of social status. What went wrong in Greenblatt's brain? Why was he totally unable to interpret his own, most obvious autobiographic conclusions of the true author William Shakespeare, hidden in his plays, of its unforeseen life catastrophe, of its loss of identity and name, of the alteration of the author's social status? Was he totally unaware of an absolute, virtually congruent disaster? of Christopher Marlowe's destiny, which Greenblatt could have only recognized or evaluated, however, if he would have been ready, not to reject the Marlowe Shakespeare theory in the first place. Stephen Greenblatt's Fatal Gaps on the True Shakespeare, Blog 10 Harvard professor Stephen Greenblatt gave an interview with the Süddeutsche Zeitung about Shakespeare, June 22, 2006. His key findings on the poet got its own three subtitles. 1. To deprive himself of any inspection, was the strategy in Shakespeare's life. 2. There was a painful gap between what Shakespeare wrote, and what he has lived. 3. Shakespeare was absolutely determined not going to jail. All findings of Greenblatt would get an immediate sense, if he had included the Marlowe Shakespeare thesis, which states that Marlowe would have come to death unless his patron, William Cecil, would not have had the power to make him disappear from the focus of the public arena. Greenblatt's intuitive knowledge that the true Shakespeare tried a lifetime to escape any control of his being known fits like a key to the lock of Marlowe's destiny. Marlowe achieved his hiding by a frequent change of his author's names or initials, including Shakespeare, which could not be assigned to one person. The extent of personal and literary identity change is beyond human imagination. Shakespeare, and the Holocaust. Blog 12. You may not expect, in which dimensions the controversy, over Shakespeare's authorship continues to work until the 21st century, there was the proposal by William Nieder Korn in the New York Times of 30 August 2005 to integrate our extended knowledge and research of the Shakespeare authorship problems, into future academic curricula on Shakespeare. Niederkorn wrote in his New York Times article, entitled The Shakespeare Code and Other Fanciful Ideas from the Traditional Camp, on both sides of the authorship controversy, the arguments are conjectural. Each case rests on a story, and not on hard evidence. Either side, or both, might eventually be proved wrong. Meanwhile, and it could be a very long meanwhile, perhaps an eternal meanwhile, things will continue as they are or perhaps not. What if authorship studies were made part of the standard Shakespeare curriculum? The Harvard professor and Shakespeare expert, Stephen Greenblatt, expressed his outrage in a response letter to the New York Times September 5, 2005, a repudiation of the Stratford man would amount to a non-recognition. 
Greenblatt wrote, in both cases an overwhelming scholarly consensus, based on a serious assessment of hard evidence, is challenged by passionately held fantasies, whose adherents demand equal time. The demand seems harmless enough, until one reflects on its implications. Should claims, that the Holocaust did not occur, also be made part of the standard curriculum?